Hi, my name is Johanna. And I'm Elizabeth. Welcome back to Gardening While Intoxicated. Mmm. This is delicious. What's this, Johanna? This is a mulled wine, obviously, because there's a cinnamon stick. Uh, I have no idea which wine it was. It was the cheapest one I had. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you generally, with mulled wine, you want to use a cheaper red wine because you're adding spices to it, and it would be a waste to use good wine. We're doing mulled wine because that would be something you would only have in, during the holidays, if at all. Based on a suggestion by a viewer, we are pairing wines. Pairing wines to the plants. With our plants. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Which means today we are talking about holiday plants and we're going to be going through the top five holiday plants. The first holiday plant we're going to talk about are Narcissus, also known as daffodils. We did do an extensive bulb hack video, which we'll be linking either above or below. But go ahead, tell us about it. But this is a, one of my favorite holiday gifts, so I felt it was worthwhile to revisit the whole Tizetta. And this, these type of narcissus slash daffodils are called Tizettas, and they are not hardy in our zone. Uh, they do grow very nicely in the south. You can plant them as perennials. Here, we force them, and they're the easiest bulb to force of all. Now I buy my Tazettas from a special place called Old House Gardens. We've talked about them before. One of the reasons I love them is, um, for example, these Tazettas are called Early Cheer and they bloom, They're, they have double flowers, they have a lovely scent, um, not at all overpowering like many of the paper whites that you might buy at the big box stores. I never buy those. Listen to the description of uh, this Tazetta called Avalanche. If daffodils were athletes, Avalanche would be wearing an Olympic medal extra vigorous with 15 to 20 fragrant blossoms per stem was discovered thriving happily halfway down a rocky sea cliff in the Scilly Islands where Tazettas had once been grown by the thousands in the fields above. They don't just send you, you know, fantastic bulbs. They tell you a story and they give you a lot of instructions and if you go on your website you'll get even more instructions. So I can't say enough good things about Old House Garden. That being said, I'm going to plant the early cheer variety which is a double. Note the incredible tall vase that I'm using. The reason I do this <laughs> is that, you know, to set, these get very tall. And if you have them in a short vase, they kind of, they will flop all over the place. That is not possible in this vase. And then in the last video, you talked about giving them alcohol to stunt them. That's right? true. But I won't need to stunt these. Yeah. They'll, they'll be lucky if they make it above. And sometimes when they bloom under, you know, within the glass, it's really neat looking. Some of these have their outer skin on them. Some do not. Makes no difference. Does not matter. Since you only get like one or two with these early cheer per bulb, or sometimes even one flowering stem, although it is double, I'm going to put four. And then I take my rock and kind of just to hide the bulb a little bit. A little more artful. And then... You just add water to where you can tell the bottom of the bulb is, just about right, right below the bulb. Put it in the sun, you're done. And do the roots look really neat and come out around? Oh yeah, oh roots? sure, yeah. yeah. And, and they're, you know, since there's not a lot of space here, what they're gonna do is the roots are gonna go all the way around and you'll see tons of roots. And I, I like that. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of my favorite kind of part cool because it reminds me of like an undersea animal. And you can see that they're actually already started. Yeah. Um, it's gonna, <laughs> they're gonna like, a week or two in a cold, dark place. Because these are special Tazettas. These are not like the crappy ones you buy at Home Depot. And with the Tazettas, do you keep those bulbs or you toss them after they're used or what? Uh, you just compost them when they're done. You get rid of them. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to bloom again the next year. You might get some green foliage, come, green leaves coming out of them. That's all you're going to get. They're just they're one use. Next, we are going to be talking about Amaryllis. Now, Amaryllis, first of all, I just want to say, they're actually, their proper botanical name is Hippiastrum. No one uses it. And this is really one of the cases where people are using the wrong name and everyone accepts it. Even garden professors, horticulture, we've all given up. Amaryllis it is. Amaryllis, very easy to grow. Um, we mainly grow them in dirt, but quite honestly, they could be grown over rocks, um, just like the Tazettas do. Um, when you buy them in the store, you'll often see that the the uh, buds are coming right out already. Um, I mail order my amaryllis like I do, and there's a big difference with size. Now I mail order these, and these are just uh, these are called wedding dance, and I also have this potted, and that this is the same as this. Um, they're smaller. This 
was in a, this is actually called Gigantic White. <laughs> And I can see why. Yes, I got these in, <laughs> from Van Englen, and Van, Van Englen had a whole classification, gigantic bulbs. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't resist getting one gigantic bulb. It's so gigantic, it wouldn't even go in these pots, which I love for amaryllis, so I'm having to put it in this terracotta pot, which is big enough for it. Now, when you plant these, you want their shoulders above the dirt. So I'll fill in all this part with dirt and leave the rest, and then I will mm -hmm. just, um, a little bit of water, not much. Do not overwater these. They're kind of hard to kill, too. Yeah. What I do with these, too, is that they get very tall. They have heavy stalks. They'll often get multiple. This, obviously, is going to have at least two blooming stalks. And so you well, want to... Yeah, I think it might have three coming up. Oh, there's Yeah, and, and that happens. Cool. That's cool. And um, you're going to want to place them in such a way that they might be, oh, like say if I have my glass vase of Tazetas, I'll put the amaryllis next to it. We have some pictures that show that. Mm -hmm. You can't really stake them. Mm -hmm. And so just lean them artfully against a window, against another plant. Um, and, and they look really good grouped with other holiday plants as well. And then do you have to rotate them so no, like, no, the no, light's no, going no, into no. that? No. Okay. There's right. no need. And they all bloom at different times. Now this one is going to probably be in bloom by Christmas, I'm thinking, because you know we're, we're still like halfway through November now. Yeah. This one probably later, I've had them blooming well into February. So, and that's fun too. So you want to get a lot of different types. Mm -hmm. Some of them, and, and the, the website will tell you which ones are Christmas flowering and which ones will flower later. Van, like I said, John Sheepers, Van Englen is an excellent, also Brent and Becky's Bombs. Right. These are all over the place. Yeah. Yes, this they were, they were actually all over the place last year. I heard about them, yeah. but it takes a while for these trends to kind of percolate into my consciousness. So this year, I sort of was looking around. I found this one online, but they also have them at Trader Joe's a lot cheaper. If you're going to get the waxed amaryllis, get them at Trader Joe's. Now, now I have this one, and I also bought, I just like the plain colors. Um, we're showing a still of a green one I had that I actually like better than this red one. But this red one is fine. I don't find it offensive in any way. I have seen... There's some really obnoxiously Yes, they have faces, and they're glitter, and yeah. It's been covered in wax. Um, it's been treated or watered or something. I mean, I wish I knew what they do to these. It will grow with no care whatsoever. Doesn't need any watering, doesn't need any dirt. Just put it down, it'll come up. All my friends who have had these are also gardeners. So of course, these are meant to be one use only, but that didn't stop my friends. Mm -hmm. They peeled the wax off, they put it in dirt. Sure enough, they grew roots and then they bloom some more. Oh, cool. And then with these, do you keep or toss these? Can you read them after the second? You can try to keep them going. Yeah. Uh, it takes a little bit of work. Next, which one are we doing? We've been seeing this plant around a lot at the holiday times, and it is an adorable little plant. They call it Frosty Fern. It comes with a label that gives you absolutely no information whatsoever, mm -hmm. except not for consumption, which I would have figured out anyways. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> It's not a fern. It's, and this is why we always recommend using botanical names instead of common names, because a common name would think that will mislead it's a fern. you. Yeah. And um, when you have the exact botanic name, then you can look up this exact plant and find out its proper care. Mm -hmm. Now, this plant is called Seligonella crossiana, and it's actually a type of moss. It's adorable. Okay, well, we're going to get rid of this totally useless label. It's told us Does nothing. Does it say tropical foliage? Who knows? <laughs> and. <laughs> And here's another thing about these holiday plants. Now, I know that this looks very festive, this foil around the plant. It's terrible for the plant. The plant will sit in water. And this is why when you have these out and you have them inside these, you'll be, oh, why did my plant die and it's not even Christmas yet? That's why. So, what I would do, if you want to keep the foil, first of all, I would either take it out of the foil and repot it. Mm -hmm. That's one option. Leave it out of the foil in its plastic pot, another option. You're going to want a saucer underneath it in either case. Or you could cut off the bottom. See? Like so. Then you still have your foil if you want it. And it is kind of, you know, it's nice, red and green, very holiday-like. Put a saucer underneath it, and you're, there you are. So this just requires um, good indirect light and light watering. And then this one do you keep or you toss? I would try to keep this going. Okay. It, I would keep it going as a house plant. 
but definitely do something about the foil. Next, we're going to talk about Schlumbergera, also known as a Christmas cactus. And Elizabeth, tell well, us about this one. Yes, now this is one, and honestly, there are uh, many different types of Chris Christmas cactus that I, I've seen. Um, there's a truncata, there's buckeye, there's a whole bunch of other ones. I honestly don't know which one this is. I do know that some cr Christmas cactus have more pointy points along their leaves and some don't, which these, this doesn't, and that tells you what type it is. It doesn't really matter for our purposes, for the home gardener. Christmas cactuses are great because they generally bloom around Christmas time. Um, I've had this one since 1987. Mm. They're very long-lived plants. That's the great thing about them. I'm sure many of you watching this also have had Christmas cactuses for, for decades. What they want, just you know, ordinary houseplant care, light, water, you know, uh, decent light, doesn't have to be super bright and watering. However, they do want it to be dark at night. So you keep them in a room that you're not lighting at night. For me, that's the dining room, which doesn't get used that much. If you do that, it'll start getting buds as this one is. Let's find some buds here. Okay. It's kind of early, yeah. It's starting to get its little buds, which when full will be kind of like these. Although this one, look at this, this has the points. Oh, yeah. So this is a little different. But um, the flowers that I get on this are, are maybe a deeper fuchsia than this. Mm -hmm. It gets quite full, just blooms for a long time, and then sometimes people will have it give out a second bloom right around in sometime in the spring. Oh, the, the one thing, um, it is a cacti, but it's a type of forest cacti. Oh, so it likes to be yeah, it's a very better. Yeah, it's, so don't... Don't treat it like your normal cactus and think it doesn't want water. It only want, wants water when it rains in Arizona. Not true. Water this as you would any house plant. Last, we're going to talk about probably the queen of Christmas plants, the poinsettia. 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 Right. Poinsettia. Poinsettia. <laughs> poinsettia. Poinsettia. So, um, I haven't bought my poinsettia yet. I, so I, I just grabbed this one from Trader Joe's just to talk about them a little. Just as I did with the other plant, the frosty fern, this decorative wrapping is the pits. Poinsettia, especially poinsettia, do not like sitting in water. They will die. Poinsettias often wilt and die for apparently no reason. They're not super easy plants to keep, so don't make it, you know, don't, don't handicap them by keeping them sitting in water. The main thing that I love about poinsettias, and I, I know some people don't like them because they're such a cliche plant, and if you did just have one like this, sitting in the middle of a table, not too exciting. But you can have fun with poinsettias. They come in all different colors. I've seen double poinsettias. Some people put glitter on them. Some people do, but those, you know, I don't go to nurseries that sell those. No. Um, if you go to a reputable nursery, and, and here in Western New York, Mishler's and Lockwood's both have excellent poinsettia selections. They, I've even seen tree form poinsettias, mm. gorgeous. Well, in the wild, they, they are like little bushes, right? Right, right. Yeah. but I, well, these are specially trained tree form. Oh. Just one, just like, and then just like a ball at the top. It's oh, really cool looking. Yeah. And just have fun with them, buy a whole bunch, mask them. You know, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna do poinsettias, go big. That's the way to do poinsettias. Like put like six of them in your fireplace. There's a rumor going around that has been going around for like decades that they are poisonous. However, they are in fact not poisonous, right? It well, unless you ate two thousand leaves or yeah, something like that. Yeah, there's a. But I think you that, would get sick if you ate two thousand of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I think it's funny that one website, uh, which maybe we'll link below, said that it did, it, the study found yes. that kids had to eat 500 to 600 in order to have any effects. So and I just keep like, are they just feeding these And the these same kids? with, I know. Well, I I'll think eat one right now. <laughs> and, and, you know, don't worry about them for your pets yeah. either. People are going insane about plant toxicity and they're taking all the fun out of plants. I have 180 houseplants and four cats, and they're all still alive. I have lilies in, in vases throughout my entire house as we speak. I always have had them. For the 20 years I've been living in this house with a cat, nothing has ever happened. Yeah. You know, I think your pets are a lot smarter than you give them credit for. Point says. All right, do we keep or toss these? Well, I, I toss. You toss. I would compost them. Um, they are not easy to keep as houseplants. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to be notified for future Gardening While Intoxicated videos. We are doing these once a month. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Lake Effect Plant Lover. And also, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and also let us know about plant-related topics that you'd like us to take up in a 
future video. Uh, you can find me at EA Licata at Instagram. I blog regularly at GardenRant.com, and I also blog at GardeningWellIntoxicated.com, where we also post these videos. Happy holidays! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's adorable. I know. Oh, it's not. Do they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I noticed it at the aquarium. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, aquariums never smell that good. That's the only thing. No, but like in the wild, they still smell good. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like, really, really good. Why do you suppose it is? Because they shit everywhere.